Well, the last couple runs that I've attempted here have been what we in the business call a disaster. And what we in the biz nasty call a disnaster. Who's that run that nasty business? Nasty boys. So, I'm instead switching into the ultimate concierge outfit, switching out of using the shrapnel axe, which, I don't know, maybe I'm just bad at using melee in this update. Maybe melee is still kind of bad. Maybe the shrapnel axe just kind of leaves something to be desired, but I could not get off a run, a run off the ground with that. So, instead, what I'm doing is I'm taking a weapon that I know that I can use at least somewhat well, the magic missile. Dropped from the Arbiters, it's pretty much a... Uh, something of a alternate version of the electric whip. Homes in on enemies, even if you're far above or below them. Doesn't have the critical and doesn't scale with brutality, but to compensate it has a lot of extra range. And that lot of extra range means that you can hit enemies pretty hard with them before they can even start to hit you. I like it a lot, mostly because it reminds me a lot of pyrotechnics. Although it doesn't have the critical hit or the or the extra burn damage. Still, the fact that you can get a lot of range off that puts me a lot more in my element than using the shrapnel axe ever did. Aside from that, also working with a lot of other uh, secondary items boost up the damage here, whether it's a, a Hokuto's bow or ice bow to freeze enemies in place, maybe get a little bit of bleed damage off of that, as well as just some uh, decent skills on top of that. Tonic, as per usual, so I can get some good heals in. Heavy turret, because that's just the standard for getting a lot of damage out of your out of any sort of tactic scaling skills. And I've also grabbed the Lacerating Aura for this particular run, with the idea that maybe grabbing Hunter's Instinct could get me a ton of ex a ton of usages out of that over time. Whether it's running through uh, clouds of kamikaze bats or just some sort of synergy, as well as spamming lasers all over the place, giving me a good opportunity to kill enemies and use that a whole time. And aside from that, uh, since I am only doing this on 4-cell mode, look, I want an easy run. I want to run that didn't take a feature like film worth of time. I'm only, I'm going to be going for the cavern. You know, kind of check out that place again, rather than going the usual route that I do every single other time. And unfortunately... Where I went wrong with this particular run was I decided to go through the sewers. Now, at this point in time, there are other better ways to get uh, into the cavern. Most recent update actually put in a two-cell door that leads directly to the cavern from the slumbering sanctuary. Probably the way that I, I meant to grab the meant to grab the turret there didn't quite happen. Probably the way that I'm going to be getting in the cavern mostly from now on. But also, to get into the ancient sewers, you can just go through the prison depths, which, as rough as that area is, it is still much better, and also affords you an extra area to go through, compared to going through the toxic sewers. And before I get to the toxic sewers, uh, try to get as many stats here as possible, because let's just say I'm going to need them. The toxic sewers right now, they are just uh, crazy, insane unmanageably difficult for this level of the game. I mean, pretty much every enemy that I have trouble with in this latest patch, uh, knife throwers, arbiters, bombers, they all make their appearance there. It's like they're, it's like they're throwing a party for all of the most irritating and, like, highest kill count getting enemies just as soon as you get right into the sewers. In fact, I think in this run, the second that I get in there, you can see all three of those guys, you know, ready to... the red carpet rolled out, so... Just, just take a different route to the ancient sewers if you're going down there, or the caverns. It's, it's not worth it on high cell difficulty. Anyway, probably should have gotten that Hokuto's bow before I went into the challenge area. I know I didn't actually get hit there, but if I did, it would have taken proportionally a lot less damage if I had that extra stat on there. Oh, well, not a big deal, not a big deal. The point is that I got the 30 kills, and that was the most important thing, the, the thing that I really knew that I would need to have any chance in this upcoming area. And then it was hit up that area and just blaze right into the toxic sewers. See how this goes. Don't belabor the point any longer. Seriously considering taking a second heavy turret there, but I want to say my main hand probably going to be doing me a little bit better a higher power main hand compared to getting a second turret, which I could probably grab somewhere else. Or who knows, maybe the lacerating aura. I still like the 
I still like the idea behind that, especially knowing that there are a ton of enemies that... I would like to have some good rally to make sure that I don't lose too much health against. Potentially. Or I might just get, you know, chain hit by Arbiters. And also, there were all three of them showing up right away, like I said. I only need one turret to be able to do that, though, which is kind of the most important bit. And there are still Kamikaze Bats down here. There are still your favorite host zombies and everything like that, but... Really, those guys are the easier ones to deal with at this point. Uh, and, uh, yes, you might have seen that I did. I do still have a ton of outfits to unlock, and that is one of the other reasons why I want to do some more 4 cell stuff. I know it's just cosmetic, but I like getting a bunch of, uh... a bunch of different skins to kind of show off here. I mean, thus far in the episode, I've showed off two of them. The Ultimate Concierge skin and the... Oh, uh, what is it? The... Four cell uh, timekeeper outfit, which I think is called the collector's timekeeper outfit. Interesting little idea that the. I mean, that would certainly imply that the collector has something to do with the timekeeper. Maybe she's in his employ or something? Who knows? That's just my speculation on lore. Still not entirely sure exactly what her motives were in the game, but. That's really the best, uh, best interpretation that I got. Good example there of how the magic missile really does lock onto enemies pretty well. And stunning guys like bombers, as well as. Uh, stunning guys like bombers, you know, breaching them out of the air is super helpful for making sure that they don't attack you too much. Of course, stuff like Elite Arbiter is not really making that the easiest there. <laughs> just that guy meant to snipe me twice before I was even able to take him down. Actually, that wasn't an elite arbiter. That was an elite next to an arbiter, was it? <laughs> nah. Oh, the toxic sewers is just too much. Too much for the time being. And I got the alchemic carbine and the corrosive cloud unlocked. Maybe a little bit overkill on my part, but I wanted to make sure that I had some way of getting damage over time. And similarly with how you saw the ice bomb down there, also some sort of way to lock enemies down, you know, do a little bit of crowd control, if possible. Just because... Well, there are more than a couple examples just in this run alone that you can see where some crowd control would have been helpful. If I was gonna say, like, the... If I was gonna, like, name any specific build you'd want to be taking into the Toxic Sewers, it would probably be something with a shield. Just the ability to ricochet off a lot of shots from the knife throwers and arbiters would be pretty helpful. And if you're using a shield, you probably also have a much better, a much higher health pool to work with as well. Already getting an update for the Hulk Toes bow. I have a lot of secondary weapons unlocked. I mean, it's kind of crazy even that I managed to get the as many magic missiles as I've gotten with how many that I have unlocked right now. But uh, only Hulk Toes bow showing up for some reason. That was a good play by me there. Ooh. Well, at least Lacerating Aura, I think, was a good choice here. Breaches the bombers, takes out knife throwers and arbiters pretty quickly. Quick enough? Not really, but I'd like to say that of the five or six attempts I had prior to this going through the sewers, this was kind of the better one. Also, another good example there of seeing the great range that you can get on this weapon. You can really snipe dudes from pretty far away, which is... It really reminds me a lot of the early versions of the Electric Whip, which had that same sort of uh, attribute to it. I mean, that and, of course, the fact that you could use it so quickly... Really, uh... Brought me through a lot of early runs relatively unscathed. Ramparts, but that's not where I'm going. I want to, one, fight Conjunctivius, get, a couple, get another skin from her... And then get into the caverns for another, uh, one of the more obscure skins to get. People might not, uh, know too much about, although I've made a point of getting that every single one of the alpha updates. It's still one that I like. One that I like seeing and one that I like using. Ah, the retaliatory bomb also being somewhat irritating here as well. But here you can see all the various ways that I probably would have been better served getting a shield to block some of this stuff. Well, also, just not going in corners could help, too, but... <laughs> hey, when you're working on the fly here, you sometimes don't always know where you're going. Now, you might be saying here, this seems like a huge mistake, and you'd be correct. <laughs> Selling that? Also a huge mistake. Could have probably used that crowd control. 
Oh, well. There are enough enemies around here that... You know, especially if I find, like, a few uh, kamikaze bats, it wouldn't be too bad to deal with. Also, again, more Hokuto's bows. I, I, I swear I have more things unlocked here. But, you know, if you be a little bit careful, I can't quite use the... <laughs> use the box. Got so mad, disconnect the controller. Alright, back to live commentary. Well, I was going to continue on with doing a little bit more of the uh, magic missile run, but I think that something that might be more interesting is if I... Whoa! <laughs> is if I instead just did a whole, like, showcase of every single one of the new weapons in this update. And since I alluded a bit to the shrapnel axe earlier... Now seems like a pretty good time to kind of check it out. And despite the fact that it is brutality tactics scaling, I'm going to go with more of a tactics run this time, even though I really wanted to make a shield work well with this. However, the Ripper seems to be like it's almost made for this weapon, because as, as soon as you swing it, you shoot out a whole bunch of bits of shrapnel, as the name would imply. Which just says, it's like, well, you know, that sort of combination of... <laughs> that was very close. That sort of combination of... Um, arranged and melee hits it's like there's there's some interesting stuff that you can have go on there i mean overall i think it's a pretty interesting weapon just based on the fact that aside from what the uh the cursed sword and the frantic sword this is one of the few melee weapons that also scales with tactics so i should take advantage of that really although i'm still kind of questioning my uh infinite wisdom vis-a-vis -vis coming into the prison depths here because holy crap the, everything does so much so many projectiles all around here and I am working with a tactics build so I don't really have a whole lot of health ah uh, yes and one of the things that happened in the latest update is one owls can now break invisibility oh it's a box good stuff I mean well bad stuff but you know saying that sarcastically anyway I don't know whatever uh, yeah, it now breaks invisibility, but additionally, it's also only tactic scaling now, which, you know, always... Oh my god, it's just another Arbiter up there. There are so many Arbiters here! I hate Arbiters so much, and there's so many of them that I have to deal with. Alright. Well, anyway, overall, I really like the Shrapnel Axe. I think it's great. I just think that, uh, despite the fact that it does scale with Brutality, you're probably gonna get more usage out of it with, uh, tactics, and I just... I don't know, that doesn't really jive with me, even though it does have some pretty decent ranged attacks. This, the last hit that you get in the combo, where you shoot out about, what, five pieces of shrapnel there, does a lot of damage. I mean, and you can be pretty far away from an enemy and still hit them with that, so... For what it is, I'm gonna say... <laughs> Stop getting hit. Well, I'm gonna say, good weapon. I wanna say, though, that uh, it's something like... I mean, when it comes to axe weaponry, probably gonna get more use out of the boy's axe just because it's, well, that amazing. You know, I really gotta remember to be using my Hokuto's bow here. Managed to get, uh, right at the start of the game, one that poisons enemies, which is not only a combination, well, within itself, it also is... Ooh, interesting, but obviously not the, not the run. <laughs> I mean, which is not only a good combination in itself, the poison that the Hokuto's bow mark uh, increases the amount of damage the poison does just alone. But also it sets up a lot of good synergies for me too, so I should be using that pretty much for the first time I go up against any enemy. Whoa! What just teleported me here? And aside from that, uh, hitting multiple times with the shrapnel and the axe also means that I should be able to... Ah, uh, uh, it still got me. Means that I should be able to get a lot of extra damage off of that, too. I don't know, I think that uh, Hokuto's bow... Much like uh, getting Ripper here as one of the mutations. A good combination, a potent combination. Maybe not immediately, but definitely like a little bit later in the run. I could see myself using this sort of thing a lot more. At least when it comes to using the uh, Shrapnel Axe run proper. Oh uh, yes, and the Shrapnel Axe I believe is dropped from the... Demons? The uh, demon guys that appear in the cavern, and also, what, the, uh... Ah! Almost got me there. Uh, uh, the demon guys that appear in the cavern, and also the castle now. So... 
At least I think that's what it is. It's definitely one of the newer enemies, you know, being a new item. But I do not remember exactly who drops it. All those Arbiters are just... <laughs> <They're>, you'll... <laughs> Still less irritating than going into the toxic sewers. I mean, to no surprise, but... Because that is, like, li literally the worst. Literally the worst area in the entire game, but... Still not much of a treat to be going in here. Some sort of, like, poison heals me, or at le very least poison doesn't affect me would also be nice with all these knife throwers here. Yeah, if you're going into the depths here, I would like to... I gotta remember to, like, to keep... I gotta start with that. I gotta start with the... The Hokuto's bow hit. Why do I keep not doing that? But, anyway, yeah, I'd definitely suggest uh, taking a... Taking a shield in here to deal with these arbiters, if nothing else, because that's my god. Wow, well you just die already, dude. Oh, it's a good thing that I kept that watermelon piece over here. <laughs> Otherwise, that could have turned out much worse. Yeah, you know what? I'll I'll, I'll take the malaise for right now. Uh, another thing that I'm noticing here, or at least in my limited experience, is that I'm just not getting as much. Uh, Breach on the the various slashes that I've been fighting than I would really like. Ah, it still hit me anyway. Well, at least I can rally up most of that health. And I was really hoping that I would see another uh, tonic up here to kind of buff me out, but this is this is okay too. I don't really want to take this because then I lose out on the 100% on poison target. So, guess I'm gonna have to say no on that one. Yeah, breaching enemies, especially like uh, hitting them with a shield or something like that. Usually that uh, that's the way you want to kind of like deal with slashers, but just haven't been able to do that as effectively. My god, these Arbiters are just... are too much. Too much, I say. Ugh. Getting rid of that malaise alone is going to be <laughs> more important than keeping every one of my... This is... I swear, this was the, the exact like the exact same thing happened last time when I went into the prison depths. Just the, a cavalcade of misery, pretty much a, the official um, descriptor for for this place. All right, what do we got? Not too amazing that I'm looking for here. I guess I'll just take that as a little bit of extra money, but then also go for you many stats as possible and indeed I probably am gonna go and grab the curse chest in the four cell door up here I want to kind of wait until I was near the end of the area just to try to avoid exactly what you just saw happen <laughs> then uh, I, I still want to go for the conjunctivius get into the sewers a little bit I just didn't want to take the uh, the bad way to go <laughs> and I think that this will be a lot more palatable <laughs> 13 points in tactics. Not amazing, but also I do have uh, the Hokuto's bow and the shrapnel axes that are not really helping me on that front. I guess it's helping me with the money, or uh, not the money, the HP that I have here, which uh, like I guess that was important when I was up against the that slasher that took me down a lot earlier. Still frustrating. All right, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the rest of the runs that I have going on here are going to be all based around using survival weaponry. So, knocking out two of them this time using the War Javelin and the Seismic Strike. And you can tell that I went through the toxic sewers to get here because I'm down three potion charges. My god, that area. It needs to change. So anyway, Seismic Strike. It roots enemies to the ground. Uh, overall, I don't know. Haven't really had a... Uh, too good of a version of this weapon just yet. I mean, the one that I have here is not even S rank and can't seem to get 100% uh, on poison target. So I've mostly been using the War Javelin, the other kind of new weapon here. Throw it out, and you can grab it to make a comeback. It does extra damage if an enemy is hit against the wall. Get it in a tiny area, you can just throw that thing over and over and over. But it also does a lot of damage just based on... Yeah, sure. 
It also does a lot of damage just based on the fact that you can, any enemy hit by it will get moved a decent amount. So you can, uh, say if an enemy's on the edge of, an, of a platform here, it can just fall right off and have gravity do most of the work. This area down here is where you get the blueprint for the frontline shield now, in case you're wondering. Would probably recommend doing something like this instead of jumping down there yourself, taking a little bit of damage potentially. All right. Actually, before I grab you, I see what looks like a much nicer seismic strike around here. So, go grab that first. Oh, wasn't quite enough to get the impale enemy. Wow, now that's a much better seismic strike, speaking of which. Yeah. Damn. There are some pretty, pretty uh, sweet new uh, affixes that you can get on survival scaling weapons now. And I want to say that this one, pretty good example of that. All right. Show me what you got. Well, it's impale. Not bad damage, although I want to say that it's also a lot of crusher action going on there, too. Ow. All right, come on now. All right, not too bad. Considering that I'm working with only nine survival, I had, what, nearly? Uh, God, I want to say something around the li along the lines of 14 or so tactics in the last round that I was doing. That was, that took him down relatively quick. And I'm also using Crusher here, mostly because I want to say if there was uh, something that would synergize well with Seismic Strike, probably the Crusher. You know, roots enemies to the ground so that you don't have to worry about dudes kind of wandering out of range of the, the weapon, everything like that. And just grab and throw and grab and throw. I do think that of of the two new weapons I'm using here, I really like the javelin a lot more. The only problem I would say that it has is that oh, shots explode into a toxic cloud, eh? Yeah, sure. It's gonna lose a little bit of damage. However, might gain a lot more synergy type of stuff going on here. Anyway, yeah, the only issue that I'd say that I have with it is the fact that you can't really use it too much in boss fights, or at least it's not going to do nearly as much damage in boss fights, or more specifically the boss fight that I'm going to be going for right now, the Conjunctivius, definitely what I would call uh, on the less useful side of things. Well, we'll see. I mean, she does uh, fly around a whole lot, so throwing weapons, you know, well, not even just throwing weapons, but any sort of uh, ranged weapon going to be a lot more useful against Conjunctivius than... A melee thing. So I guess the only time will tell. Alright, not bad. Definitely gonna have to go for some curse chests, which is gonna be a super fun. Thank God for the poison does not affect me, Affix. Ah, anyway. Probably should have gone through the prison deaths, gotten a lot more stats here been way more prepared for this area, but I also wanted to just kind of get on with these, man, with these runs already. Little too much, uh, getting killed due to, there we are, a little bit too much, uh, getting killed due to some bad weaponry and just still not quite, uh, hello, oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, uh, reference here, I see. Good stuff. I don't. I think I might have in the past gotten Michelangelo's outfit, so maybe there's a maybe there's a full set of them. I'll have to kind of look into that into the future. But for right now, I guess I'll just be satisfied uh, getting but one of what might be a number of. There's so many enemies happening in here right now. It's a good thing that I didn't uh, come into this area cursed. Otherwise, I probably would have died ten times over just at the very start here. All right. Feel like 100% poison synergy with a bomb. I would probably be taking out these enemies very quickly. And there you are. All right. Let's see what I'm working with this time and against an elite. I want to say maybe a little bit better. Potentially. Okay, not tremendous amount better thus far. 
Uh, shield probably would also... Actually, I don't know, because this... It's a weird thing, thinking about this. It's based around, like, rooting enemies. Let's just do this here. Based around rooting enemies, which is not really something that... I think, like, a lot of survival-based stuff would really synergize with. The Nutcracker, I suppose, but that's also not really one that... You know, two melee weapons doesn't really jive too well with each other. Usually you want to be using one or the other. Sort of the issue with us, like if you want to take an oil sword and a torch, I just don't really think it would be all that uh, synergistic. I don't know, that combined with the fact that uh, I want to say its damage is not anything really special. I don't really know when you'd want to use this weapon in particular. Maybe I just lack imagination in that regard. Oh, come on. Directly behind me? Seriously, dude? Oh, God. <laughs> that was so close. Oh, because you always still have that. Uh, I want to say it's a glitch. I'm really, I really can't imagine it being a part of the game where you kind of uh, freeze for a second if you're holding down a button when you're uh, coming out of the, hey, you got cursed, bro, message. Definitely a harrowing experience anytime that happens, and I'm very glad that I didn't die there because of it. I know the game really wanted to kill me, but it did not happen. I live for one more day. But we'll see how long with this curse. I still got eight enemies to go. And not a whole lot of options that aren't, you know, go through some pretty precarious spike pits here. Well, let's see what we got. Should be okay, unless I play this really badly. All right. I'm probably going to rely on the bomb to kind of take care of most of the riffraff around here. Yeah, one of the things that I've definitely noticed with the survival-based runs is that... Take him down. Okay. One of the things I've definitely noticed with survival-based runs is that powerful grenades are uh, quite good at destroying huge groups of enemies. In other words, you know, the number one time that you would probably get curse. Uh, the number one way that you probably deal with curses, or at least the way that I deal with curses, just throwing bombs into huge groups of enemies and letting that take care of it. I want to say that's another one of those. Hey, yo. <laughs> I want to say this is another one of these uh, poison pits down here that kind of uh, led to the end of my run this time. Indeed. And it would have led to the end of the run at this point in time, too. Wow, I'd, maybe a little bit too difficult there, Motion Twin. Just want to say. Ah. Well, aside from the potion charge stuff, I want to say now the run's going kind of okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think that, like... Well, I'm hoping that I can find a uh, tonic coming up here. Let's just say that. And maybe... No, infected. Not not really going to be too helpful, especially knowing that I got that inside right now. Oh, well, what's in this area over here? If it's another cursed chest, I'll take it. I just need as many stats as I can uh, cram down my throat at this point in time. What a rough area. <laughs> but hey, at least with survival, I have enough health to kind of support that uh, sort of lifestyle. At least for the time being. And... okay. Well, mostly okay. Now it's okay. <laughs> Certainly having the failed experiments also teleporting around to get behind me is not helping either. I saw that... Don't even think I didn't see that. <laughs> All right, well, that's at least a tonic. So that's full health? Not quite, but pretty close. And with the amount of malaise I got right now, I'm not happy with that, but it's manageable. And I guess that's really all I can ask at this point, isn't it? So I can get a manageable amount of curse. And that's good for that. Well, maybe not quite, but 
Hey, with a 40% extra damage, 100% on poisoned. Okay, for the time being. Yeesh. All right. Now, I believe I got a crusher that's about to be working overtime. Good. And, hey, another key. Good. Because that's only more items that I'm going to be able to get after this, which will be helpful. Maybe. Never really know. It's a huge grab bag at the end of this area. But I'd like to say that if you're using custom mode, you're probably going to get something that's useful. Mm -hmm. And okay. Powerful grenade. Still very much being MVP. And you, I don't actually need the poison synergy that I got right now because of the way my of the way you're working. So, yeah, that gives me also 100% on poison. Yeah, no, this is okay. I'm not going to say that this is the best run that I've ever had. Absolutely not. But at least I'm getting somewhere now. I'm going to say probably not a winning run, but at least you kind of get the idea of how the weapon works, and that's what I was looking with for more than anything else. Anything else down here? Anything else just in this area? Nope. All right. No potion charges. Let's go fight, uh, let's go fight Conjunctivius and see how that goes. I did in a previous run happen to get the, uh, what do I even want here? Didn't a previous run happen to get the, um, item, nah, the blueprint that I wanted, so I'm not even going for that at this point in time, but... Hey, at least in the point in time that I got that, I have a showcase of another weapon to kind of check out. Man, it's always just the next area, isn't it? Well, anyway, this is a comparatively shorter showcase segment looking at two weapons that have actually been in the game for quite a while. The Giant Killer and the Frontline Shield. Although the Giant Killer has a very much changed up moveset. A lot of very flashy jumps, slam downs with that. It's mostly the same weapon that's been for quite a while, even though it's been unobtainable until this very update. Does extra damage against elites and bosses. Although for some reason that doesn't count the tentacles as elites or bosses, so just mostly a normal weapon there. Now, I would count as mostly just a good survival scaling sword with a somewhat slow attacks until you get to a boss, uh, for example, Conjunctivius, then it really starts to shine. Frontline Shield, on the other hand, is much... It has been changed up a lot since its original uh, shield you can hold up but not parry with counterpart. It now is one that still scales with brutality, but gets extra damage if you have recently hit an enemy with a melee weapon. Making it pretty good uh, when combined with a giant killer here. Although really, for the most part, it's just the, the, the shield that you've always known and loved. <laughs> Uh, it, it's the brutality scaling, I would say, that makes it more interesting than its uh, gimmick otherwise. And I think I pointed out in the previous segment that you get it by, in the ancient sewers by jumping into a acid pool that has no bottom and grabbing it from like a, a little secret area in there. And this time what I'm using is I am using a times two damage heavy grenade to try to get a little bit of extra damage here because I'm only coming into this fight with 16 survival, which is not that much compared to other ones. And I'm not really worried nearly as much about my health when it comes to taking two times damage as making sure that I don't get too malazed up by ending this fight quicker. Not that that really stopped me from taking an absurd amount of damage during this fight anyway. Yeah, here, I'll spoil this right now. I died when I got to the next area, which I tried to go to the graveyard, so, yeah. It's a lot of pretty bad dodging attempting to use a shield. Because, hey, you know, I, I got the shield, why not try to use it as much as possible, even though it, it is really, the, the frontline shield is really just a regular shield, just with a fancy new icon, and it scales with brutality. Not too much to show there. It's not like the other shield that I'm going to be showing in this uh, showcase super episode. 
And you're kind of a mess, but hey, at least you get to see every single weapon in the game now. Yeah, if you're not getting that critical on the, the giant killer, it's not as good until you get that second and third hit of, a, of the combo for damage. But hey, I mean, at least you can really take down a lot of a boss's health very quickly otherwise. I guess the only thing that I would kind of be worried about with this weapon is just running up against boss damage caps over and over, especially later on, because it is a slow weapon, so probably hit that pretty easily, too. Oh, yes, this is the uh, Desert Temporal Outfit, which I believe you get for beating the Timekeeper on two boss cells. So anyway, next up is Flawless. Flawless. A new type of spear, one that uh, I thought was originally going to be a rework of the War Spear, but now it's something completely different. Living up to its name, you get critical hits if you haven't taken damage for 30 seconds. If you do take damage, a little axe appears above your head until you start getting those sweet criticals getting. For example, the one right here. Wow, I really played that one well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a sort of a similar type of... There we go. Sort of a similar type of weapon to how the uh, Nerves of Steel requires extreme timing or the Valmont's Whip requires some extreme positioning. This requires you to just play everything perfectly. And it's sort of a... Sort of in the way that the Cursed Sword forces you to play everything. It's like this one just that uh, benefits you to playing very well. I like the idea of it, but the sort of upswing... Part of the move has a little bit wonky hitbox. I mean, when I was originally starting to use this, it looked like I should have been getting a lot more hits than I actually was, which uh, led to me getting killed a lot because I thought I was breaching enemies or at the very least killing them when, nope, not so fast. All right, got my criticals back here. Using the rampart here because, you know, the invincibility aura obviously complements this weapon pretty well. That was close. One of the things I'm definitely glad they added in this latest update is the inability for those guys to turn around after after they start uh, shooting All right. After they start shooting off um the stuff. <laughs> uh, melee weapons not as good here though, which is kind of screwing me up. Well, you get an enemy in a tiny enough area much. Well, lost my critical, but that's fine. Oh, still rough. Still rough to kind of do a lot of this stuff. But with the type of build that I'm working with right now, I should be mostly... As soon as I get rid of these orb casters, it's going to be much more convenient to take out these things. Well, yeah, I, th I think the number one thing that I want... The one, number one way that I want to deal with this is to get kind of into a tiny area, and then... Well... A little bit too tiny, but whatever, it works. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Cardis outfit now. You get the, uh, That's the one that you get from the spinner. It is a, well, it's the purple to the Aphrodite outfit's pink. I like it, but obviously I think I'd rather go for the Aphrodite outfit most of the time. Ugh. Powerful grenades still in full effect. They are extremely, extremely good at taking out enemies that are ranged. Which I'm encountering a lot of them, so yeah, that's pretty all right. Alienation, because I don't really need the healing from food. And I do really need to not have a whole lot of curse, because I tend to get hit a lot with this weapon. Which is ironic, considering the how you're supposed to be using it. Oh yes, the weapon is dropped from the slammer enemy, the crows that you find in the cavern. Which is sort of a weird thing. Honestly, when I saw the name, I was thinking that you might have had to, like, beat up a boss without taking damage or something like that. Just not even going to... Just kind of relying on these guys to try to hit me so I can get some sick parries in, but, uh, no, nah, just... Ain't having none of that. Yeah, it's surprising how much I'm using parries a lot more now that I'm going more with, uh, survival builds. It, they just... Too good right now. Yeah, well, without the critical hit, 
Might as well just go for parries then instead. Or you know what? I'm not even going to fight this guy. Screw it. I've already taken way too much uh, malaise damage as it is. There's no reason that I should be taking any more. There are, what, good two, three curse chests in this area that I'm going to definitely try to get? We'll see over time. I mean, after all, it already befits me to play this flawlessly. Why not try to curse myself as much as possible? And the critical increase is pretty substantial, too. It's almost more than twice the damage of the base weapon. So that if you're trying to get uh, any damage off of this weapon, you really need to not be getting hit at all. 30 seconds. Well, it depends on if you're running into a lot of hallways, but... That can be a pretty long time in the game. I want to say that most fights, aside from boss fights, take, like, less than a second to actually finish. Alright, this is going to be a little bit rough. Honestly, like, yeah, this is really one of the worst areas that you can go to for melee weaponry. So many flying enemies and everything to try and do that are... Here we are. So many flying enemies that are not very easy to hit with this sort of weaponry. Probably should have gone to, like, the graveyard or something instead, but... I also definitely didn't really want to try try my hand against the Conjunctivius this time, especially with this weapon. Get something like a, uh... The bullet hell pattern, and then suddenly... Well, got a big old X above my head for most of the fight after that. Oh boy. Uh, maybe just not fight that guy. Maybe just like... Just, I don't know, run away or something. Wait until my bombs are back up and then I can take care of those two guys. Uh, one of the reasons why I went to this area was because there's a new, there's the new um, cavern. Where's the other one? Oh, that was very close. Because there's the new cavern entrance in this place, so I want to kind of check that out. And I'm going to guess it's right here. <laughs> kind of in the exact same way that it appears in the... Yep. Kind of the exact same way that it appears in the... Uh, the Guardian's Haven entrance appears in the... Sepulchre. I might as well explore the rest of this area. Why not? Definitely going to be going into the cavern. Because, well, the footage that I have kind of requires that. That was very close. And there, was able to keep that invincibility for the entire time. Ramparts definitely... really been raised up like a lot of... Well, actually, you know, I never thought the Rampart was bad or anything before. It's just now, the whole invincibility and the good synergy with this has really made me use it a whole lot more. Enemies teleporting to you and all that. Ooh. Yeah, give me give me poison action. Yeah, I like that. I really do need to eventually get an upgrade for my flawless, because as good as it is, it is still kind of falling behind a lot of the other weaponry. Okay. Of course, even then, I am still getting a pretty substantial amount of damage. Despite having not even 200% uh, damage on this thing. So, oh no. <laughs> Said that in kind of an overly dramatic way, like I was on a kid's show or something. But, you know, I, I don't know. It's cool. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Also, poison synergy. Also going to be a thing that I'm going to want to get here. But, did I get hit? Oh, I just got, I got just the slightest little bit of clip in there. That's extra malaise damage, and that's my flawless not working. Yeah, it's, I, I like this weapon. It is very frustrating to use sometimes, though, because it's... W one of the things that it really does uh, make sure that you can't really do is hold up a shield, because you still take a minor amount of damage, and even a slight amount of damage is enough to, you know, say, uh, get rid of your otherwise very good... You know what I'm saying here. <laughs> anyway. All right, definitely going to want to be careful around here with all the Arbiters. And uh, what is this? I just want to see. Uh, a guy that's probably going to... 
an elite that has a large... All right. Also another elite down there. Wow, just a lot of really bad stuff happening. Let's just, let's just kind of book it out of here a little bit. Ooh, my confidence levels are dropping pretty dramatically right now. All right, all right. There is still a food shop in here, too, so I'm going to have to definitely look around for that to see if I can grab uh, some malaise reduction. Oh, that was just like the ideal curse-relieving station right there. Unfortunately, got this tile happening, too. Boy, just ha the, the amount of heavy grenades is just so good. I, I'm so happy that uh, they got uh, improved just a couple patches ago to being incredibly good rather than just, uh, you know, not, not good enough for the cooldown that you needed to kind of have, that you need to deal with uh, to make these things work. Taking out huge groups of enemies at once. Well, I, I guess that is also dependent on the fact that I have uh, 20... 20 points survival right now, but that's still kind of relatively low. I mean, if I was working with something like a tactics build right now. Ooh, so close. Well, then I went for the parry. Did I actually get a parry off on that, or was that a just a kill? I don't even know. I'm not going to question it, really. And there we go. Okay. I'm glad that there was not a... Glad that there was not a, um... Golem down there. Otherwise, that could have been very bad. Relatively low health on these guys, but... Yeah, it's really just the fact that I need an increase. There we go. Just get that parry for no reason. Okay. Stressful, but honestly, it's not going too bad. And I still do have all of my... I still do have all of my um, points... Or all of my uh, flash charges here. So it's really not completely terrible. Stuns the victim, though, is pretty good. And overall, these are all, like, increased amounts of damage compared to what I was working with already. So maybe I'll just go grab this one. 40% extra damage as long as I'm not getting hit. And point of brutality and survival. Yeah, good enough. <laughs> hey. I swear, I cannot keep this. Well, it's a good thing that I'm going into the cavern after this, where it's only going to get even worse. <laughs> gonna definitely be, uh... That's definitely gonna be a fun time. Parries also do a lot to kind of make sure that you're not getting hit too much by Arbiters. Just hitting, hitting away their bombs like that. All right. I don't know. I, I was going to just go to the next area, but I really do want that upgrade on... That was so close. I really do want that upgrade on the... Um, on the land... on Flawless, if I can, because it's just... It's so early in the game. This is such an early game weapon still. 175. But uh, it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen, unfortunately. Oh, well, you can get some really, really high-level equipment when you get down to the cavern, so... Let's just go do that, I suppose. Really thought I could kill all those enemies as soon as I opened up that chest. Now, I don't really have any reason why I would think... It, anyway, anyway. So, Hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is another throwing axe introduced in this update that you get from 5-cell spoiler area. It's still... It's very similar to the boy's axe, but being survival scaling, it's much slower, and you also get a lot more ammo on top of that. 
So it's not quite as spammable, however it makes up with that when you, because it has a very good critical hit uh, that works sort of similar to the Seda Stiletto that does extra damage on enemies that are bleeding or poisoned. And it also causes enemies to bleed, sort of propagating its own critical. It's a boy's axe that's slower, but also allows you to create a much tankier build. It's, it's honestly one of the, the, my favorite items that they introduced in this update. Just because you can have a very nice build alongside a high damage weapon. Provide that you're able to get the critical off. High enough to deal with the caverns on 4-cell mode? Hard to say. I mean, certainly the ability to take a hit is helping me here, but... Having this much malaise is not. And although I did happen to have a an invisibility necklace in this run, I'm trying not to use it as much as possible because, well, come on, I want to use the weapon. I don't just want to make it a cheesy run around sneaking past every single one of the enemies here. I guess it's supposed to be a showcase, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, you, you still get a lot of chances to get invisibility necklaces in any sort of 4 or 5 cell run. If you're going for the enemy kill doors, if you're going for the time doors, if you're killing every single elite possible, you're very likely to run into that affix in one place or another. And I, I, honestly, I feel like I should at some point in the future maybe make it a policy of not taking that every single time I see it just because it is too cheesy to use. That was pretty close, but managed to deal with it anyway. Uh, yeah, having a... One of the other nice things about having the axe is that a boy's axe works best when you have two of them at the same time, but I want to say that like using two of the hemorrhages is not going to be nearly as effective just because it's it's so slow that you can't really throw, them, throw two of them at the same time. So that gives you... Good usage out of a shield. Got the rampart this time, much like the other run that I was doing with Flawless. And then I also grabbed a. And then I also grabbed a torn, uh, colorless tornado this run. Yeah, I had that one unlocked with the idea that I might be able to, you know, open up a cursed chest and grab one of those. And I did, but I feel like that's inconsistent enough that it's not really something that I would rely on for most runs. Ugh. Also help would help a lot if I managed to get any of the parries going on here. Yeah, uh, the tornado also gives me a decent amount of rally, which is great because I am working with a super uh, survival tanky focused run. You can see all the mutations I have, necromancy, prolonged healing, everything like that already, or dead inside as well, all ready to give me as much uh, chance at survival as possible, and it's still not quite good enough. Similarly with a tornado giving me rally, it's like that's nice and everything, but malaise is almost more of the issue. When at the very start of the run where I managed to get caught in a corner around what five or six demons all shooting at me, didn't really uh, didn't really take too much damage, did take a lot of points of malaise. And malaise doesn't quite kill you at this point in time now, it only brings you down to 10% health and keeps you there. But that's still low enough that it would, you know, end with me dying <laughs> in a single hit, regardless of how much health I have. Oh, yeah, one of the other reasons why I wanted to get a tornado here was just to kind of block some of the shots here, because it can destroy projectiles. For example, the ones from Arbiters that are off-screen that you can't see. Ugh. And yeah, one, of the, one of the patch updates said that they made it so it was a little less, uh suicidal to go in this area on 4 and 5 cell mode and I guess it is somewhat better but boy there are still a lot of very rough enemies in here to get to deal with I mean, like it, it's, it's almost something of a mercy to just see a failed experiment and be like ah finally this huge tanky heavy melee fighter it's, it's so much nicer than fighting all these demons and slammers and arbiters all the time if I could nail a few more of the parries here, that would also be nice too, but... Ah. Ah. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is another run, this is another showcase run that is going to end pretty much immediately after I... Yeah, I guess if you're invisible, it doesn't actually activate the uh, crystal things there, which is weird. 
Something that could deal with some of the enemies here if I could get them to work with me. But yes, I died on the giant, so I'm going to be switching over to the next weapon as soon as I get there. It's not even worth showing you because I... To no surprise, I used up all of my potion charges just trying to keep the malaise down more than anything else in this area. Ah, uh, yes, and I, this is also the point where I... Where I uh, uh, got the blueprint that I was talking about, the specific skin that I was talking about earlier on. Which you have to get a key that you can find somewhere in this area and also be on at least four cell difficulty to get into the four cell door that has been introduced now. Uh, there are actually two four cell doors in this area. Yeah, there's where I got rid of the invisibility just to make it a little less cheap. Make it so it's not even tempting to use that and also get some extra stats on that too. Yeah, there are multiple doors in this area now that include, I, I think, what, a couple chests and then... One four cell is the one I'm talking. One four cell door is the one I'm talking about with the skin in it, and one four cell door contains a curse chest, which is what killed me last time. So, I guess there's a potential for getting some extra stats in here, but I don't, I don't, I don't think it's really worth it. The cavern is still extremely difficult to deal with at this point in the game. Yeah, because there was no way I was going to be able to afford the afford the potion charge as much as I would like it. Yeah, I, I would like to say that the real reason you would want to go into the cavern is because the level of items in here are so ridiculously huge. It's... I think they're up to the level that on 4 and 5 cell mode you're able to get plus 300% damage on anything you find in here, which is the most out of anything. I don't think that you can get... I don't think you, you can get more sta uh, more damage on weapons. <laughs> oh, come on, from behind me? <laughs> what is this nonsense? But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even think that like in the castle and five cell spoiler area that you're able to get that many, that much uh, extra damage on weapons here. So it's kind of unique. So it's kind of unique if you're going for this. Getting like a, a 60 kills in this area and the area leading into the cavern obviously also gives you a lot more opportunity to get some overpowered items as well. And really, that's also one of the reasons why I would say you would want to, even if you're not going through the cavern, at least maybe consider fighting the giant, if nothing else. Because it's, it, I, I would say that it's uh, pretty easy to get through the sepulcher, well, at least for me. Because of the lack of uh, projectile shooting enemies with 60 with uh, 60 kills intact. And then you can pretty easily go into... I meant to roll there. And you can pretty easily go into the uh, giant fight from there without having to deal with this nonsense. <laughs> Every single one of those demons appears in packs of two. And they shoot fireballs and they fly and oh, so... So many fun things that you got to deal with when going up against those duders. All right, still kind of searching around because, like I said, uh, looking to get into that four cell door eventually, but I do need to get a key first. And pretty much the key, I I usually see it found somewhere around one of the shops, and it's in the ceiling. You know, difficult to see, but you can always, but just, you know, look upwards, see if you can find the telltale, like, little vines and kind of uh, the hole strewn about there that you can jump into to find that. And I think this is just another chest, which, sure, nice, tonic, definitely very useful. Should not have sold that there, but I was also thinking that it's like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm even going to survive in this area right now. And looking at the ceiling real quick, nothing though. Yeah, I don't really know what the exact spawn parameters for this key is, which is why it's it's actually much like the uh, much like the architect's key that I'm carrying right now because I went through the the graveyard coming into this area. It just uh, it appears somewhere. <laughs> it's hard to tell sometimes where it could be or could not be. Yep, and here's the point where I was starting to get desperate. Where I was looking around at a few of the 
areas that I've already been through, you know, the ones that don't have enemies in them, just in case I happen to miss something. But, uh, you and I both know that this is going to be, if not quite a full clear, effectively the same thing. I, I mean, it's not too bad. Uh, hey, get more experience in this area. Even though, I would probably say that the best way to go through the cavern is to just, well, rush through it as fast as possible. The Garland Key. That's what I'm looking for, and clearly still not finding it very easily. There are, uh, the cavern is huge. It is absolutely enormous, and there are a couple of areas, even though I've crawled around here for what, a good ten minutes right now, that I haven't quite looked at. Including this one where there was literally just a stat, like, five feet to the left of that teleporter there. A little bit of exploration probably would have done me some good. Also probably would have gotten me killed. Speaking of which, it, it's not even a good idea for me to go in here right now. I already said before that the, the four cell door contains a curse chest, so... I might have been able to open up that chest, kill all those demons there, especially with the tornado kind of backing me up, blocking the shots, but... I don't even know why I went in there. It was not... it was not useful at all. God, those Arbiters. I mean, even when you're trying to, you know, be very quick and nimble and need to be, like, still end up just accidentally falling into those shots. And they're everything Inquisitors are except worse, after all. Yeah, thankfully those Ground Shakers, not too difficult to deal with. Oh, there it is. The Garland Key. Looks like a... Looks like a little can game. Which is appropriate, considering the outfit that I'm about to go get. No, not this one. This was the two-cell door. <laughs> At least this was a fairly... Uh, easy spawn for the, for the four-cell door this time, right next to one of the teleporters and not in the middle of a bunch of enemies. Yep, use it. Grab these jewels here. But that's not what you're actually getting. You are getting... The festive outfit. Oh, I love this one. It is incredibly bright and gaudy and horrible, and it looks great. <laughs> it's also one of the harder to get outfits in the entire game, so... You know, the ability to look like a clown is, is, is one that is earned, not given. <laughs> there is that one small area down there if I really want to, but I... Nah, I thought I'd try my hand the giant just to see if maybe... I mean, I'm at full health, I'm at relatively low malaise. Nah, no dice. Then we got the final two weapons looking at here. Another couple ones from the five cell mode only biome. The Sonic Crossbow and the Thunder Shield. Both uh, many small hits done over a... Done over time. And with this uh, sort of build right here, I'm thinking that I should actually be totally okay. Although it is largely because I do have a... Ridiculously huge amount of uh, DPS right now, what with the whole uh, 30 points and tactics and everything like that. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to still need to be at least a little careful here. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, one of the important things about taking out the giant is to have enough DPS to prevent him from charging up attacks. And... okay. Yeah, one of the great things about the shield is that it actually does a pretty huge amount of damage, even compared to the Sonic Crossbow. After you get a parry and it starts shooting out a little bit of thunder, it's actually... Only slightly lower than the amount of damage I'm getting off the Sonic Crossbow, something that has 100% more damage dealt right now. Uh oh. Be a little bit careful here. Okay, let's be more careful here. Alright. Yeah, this last phase of the giant is always the most, uh, the most stressful of them, I think. Okay, there we go. But one of the great things about the Sonic Crossbow is that you can hit the hand at the same time you're hitting the eye, so... Isn't really the worst thing. Also having to parry... Also having the ability to parry here definitely ain't... 
nothing to sneeze at either. Okay. Get some of my arrows back, if nothing else. Come on, this should do it. This should do it. There we go. Woof. For cell mode, that giant does a lot of damage, and he is he he does not mess around in this mode. I mean it's true, but <laughs> Oh giant. And I think that that might actually be the uh, last outfit from the giant I need to get. The the five cell one. If it's uh, worth 750 cells to unlock, that would be it. So anyway, uh, Sonic Crossbow you get by finding a uh, key sort of hidden around the edges of the five cell biome. And the Thunder Shield drops from, well, the shielding enemies in the five cell biome. Yeah, 750. So that's, I think that's all of the boss outfits that I had to get. Now I just need to go about unlocking them, which is no small task. Boy, do they, they cost a lot. Oh yes, also, despite not uh, working with my build in any way, I just wanted to take vengeance for that 60% damage reduction so that I wasn't going to get uh, comboed by the fireballs in that fight. It's not really something that should come up, but has come up more than a few times when I completely screw up dodging around those things. And, okay. Alright. Now this is a good place to have a lot of range. So, definitely going to be using that to my advantage. Same thing with having a shield here. Yeah, okay. Alright, since you didn't really get a very good look at what it actually looked like in the boss fight. So, Thunder Shield. It's purple, shoots out electricity. It has pretty small range in front of you, but it is constant damage. And like I said, it's pretty comparable even to the Sonic Crossbow at plus 300%, the one I got from the 60 kill door right before the giant. But then you combine that with uh, get, being able to do parries. You can even just hold out this shield, not take malaise damage, and then just like completely destroy enemies, especially if you say have them in an area like this up here. No malaise damage, but kill that guy, taking a minimal amount of damage. It's very good. I mean, basically, the main thing, though, is that it does require you to then... Oh, well, that was kind of fun. Uh, it does require you to then uh, get to the fifth boss cell door area and actually... What? <laughs> Make that work for you. And then when you have the extra damage on, you can see it turns yellow and is a little bit larger. Okay, come on now. <laughs> Not too worried about the rest of this run, I'd like to say, so... You know, that sort of thinking can get yourself killed pretty easily. And in fact, it did! So here's a different run, roughly at about the same place that I was at before. Less stats, but hopefully if I play this right, I won't be getting killed in an embarrassing way this time. How are you not dead up there? You know, as nice as it is to have a shield in this area to deal with the Arbiters, it's not, uh, not really doing me too many favors. This run is already starting to go like the last one. But hey, snazzy ninja outfit this time. You get this one from the Dark Trackers, so if you're looking for something a little bit more, uh, gold and black, I got, it's a good color scheme. Definitely one to look at. Oh, yes, and the previous one I was using was the, what, uh... Faithful Hand of the King outfit, which I think is the four cell kill that you get for the the Hand of the King. Really doing a lot of uh, a lot of fashion souls this episode. Yeah, should probably come as yeah. The castle, you know, is as obnoxious as ever. Let's just say, my God, <laughs> you too. Castle is as obnoxious as ever, and you really need to take this thing a lot slower than I apparently have in the last run and this run. Now, who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? Me being overconfident? Me having hubris be my downfall? Never happened. Anyway, let's just get to the Hand of the King fight, and if nothing else, I'm just going to pull, like, some... Oh, great. And if nothing else, at this point, I think I'm just going to be pulling, like, some footage from a stream where I had a very similar run. And also happen to be using the exact same 
eh, what do I want? Also, I'm going to be using the exact same outfit at the same time, too. So that's kind of amusing by its... Come on! <laughs> you shouldn't be able to hit me like that. All right, all right. Let's just calm down here. Use another potion shard, because apparently I need to. And just, you know, really take this thing slow. It's frustrating, because as much as I want to... I'll uh, play the game in the way that I'm used to, which is to say, you know, going fast, hitting hard, uh, taking names, and etc. It's, like, just not really as uh, conducive to a run as it was last time. I also do have uh, not nearly as many stats as I did in that previous run, so that's also something to remember, too. But, yeah, it's, uh, in general, runs have been slower, and that's been something of a constant consternation of But hey, I'm also playing on, you know, the hardest that the game has ever been, even more than it has before. Well, technically not this time. This time I'm only playing on 4-cell mode, but you, you get the general idea. All right. Arbiters. Definitely not uh, making friends with me. Which is unfortunate, because I'm a great friend to have, clearly. <laughs> you know, constantly killing everyone they know. Okay, I'm gone. I'm sorry. Sorry to disturb you all. <laughs> and all right. I guess the Lancer's not going to teleport up here. And... Oof. Trying to think about, like, what to do here, but then I'm also getting hit by stuff. All of the worst enemies in the game gathered here once again. To be incredibly frustrating to deal with. I mean, even if you do take this kind of slow, it's like... Some of these guys have far more health than you'd think they would, I suppose is the best way to put that. And they do not take taken out easily, even if you have very overpowered builds. Yeah, from what I've heard, it's that the... The uh, lower cell difficulties in this current patch much easier to kind of uh, be able to accomplish, but the higher cell difficulties as hard as ever. Of course, if you really just want to cheese it out, try to get an invisibility necklace. That's always pretty effective, but that's also something that you can't really rely on too much. Uh, spoilers, I did actually have one earlier this run, but I decided to get rid of it just for, you know, just to, to give the enemies a sporting chance, I suppose. And boy, did it ever give them a sporting chance. Kind of crazy, just how something that's overpowered really does kind of skew your perspective on the game entirely. <laughs> gets you overconfident, gets you thinking a little bit too much about how you're doing things. Yeah, let's just go. Let's just go. I want to finish up this run, and like I said, I do have some backup footage if it really goes completely wrong. Which has been pretty much the, the theme for this entire uh, episode, if nothing else. Like, hey, I always got different footage I can put in. All right, Hand of the King fight. Not too bad. Got a lot of damage out here. And I do have at least one potion charge, but still going to have to be a little bit careful. Heavy turrets have obviously been the, the main contributing factor for damage for this run, and I'm kind of hoping that they will continue to be here. 100% on poison, as well as enabling the poison synergy in the first place. And also get a little bit of a freezing if he does manage to hit me once or twice. It could be worth... Uh, doing that little uh, corner guarding where I just throw up the shield and have that take care of uh, most of the damage here. And okay. Alright. Yeah, you know, just like get over here, do this. I don't know how good that would could possibly be or not, but... Eh, yeah, maybe? I mean, I'm not disappointed with it. Well, good, good parry on my part. <laughs> mm. Well, at least I can rally up most of this health with nothing else. Two, three. There! That's how you're supposed to do that, or that's at least what I was trying to, attempting to do, and I went right into the bomb. All right! <laughs> Let's finish up this run in style with the overpowered boy's axe build that I've been using for pretty much all the cell grinding and blueprint collecting and the festive suit that I just uh, got 
well, over the course of this video. Yeah, Boy's Axe did an entire video on that last time. And to no surprise, it still remains the best of the build with the new weapons right now. Oh, sure, I like uh, using stuff like the... Yeah, well, whatever. Oh, sure, I like using stuff like the uh, Hemorrhage, but I want to say Boy's Axe just wins out pretty much. Uh... Stop it. Stop doing that. You're just powering me up. <laughs> ah, whatever. Don't even care, because this is going to be the end of this area anyway. Okay. And should be about five more seconds. There. Not the smoothest fight I've ever had, but hey, it's serviceable. Did what I need to do. And that's all the weapons that have been introduced in this latest update. Well, until the final version, we probably finally get the pan. So, look forward to that showcase run coming soon.